Welcome to another weekend's edition of News of the Week. And while these past couple of days there hasn't been as much signings that's been happening around MLS, there's definitely been a lot of rumors that's been happening around the league these last couple of days, including a couple of crazy rumors surrounding a couple of aging European superstar players that potentially is going to be coming to MLS. And that some of these crazy rumors just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And we'll get to talking a little bit more of that later in this News of the Week episode. But first of all, let us actually talk about the first news topic, which involved Inter Miami. And remember in the last News of the Week episode, I mentioned there was a report suggesting that current Sounders GM Chris Henderson is potentially going to be leaving the Sounders and actually going to be going to Inter Miami to become the new GM there. And that I also said that I was absolutely shocked that that was going to be a possibility because why would Chris Henderson decide to leave a team that he's been able to to build, build so much successful team to be, be regularly competing for MLS Cup and, and basically winning a couple of MLS Cup trophy while he's there? To now joining a team that is in a disarray situation, judging by a couple of of the things that's been coming out of Inter Miami in these last couple of weeks. Well, now there is new reports suggest that not only Sounders GM Chris Henderson is on the verge of leaving the Sounders, but indeed he is now closing to to sign a deal with Inter Miami and becoming the new GM there. Now, I've also said in the last episode that the only way I can see Chris Henderson potentially going to Inter Miami as their their new GM is that maybe David Beckham might have offered a lucrative deal that even him, he probably cannot turn down. Or the fact that he just feel like he needs a new challenge and maybe going to Inter Miami is a new challenge for his career of being a GM. But either way, you know, this is still a very su- surprising move and that... N- no doubt this is going to be a huge loss for the Sounders if this is going to happen. Because again, Chris Henderson, he is one of the heart and soul in terms of building this decent squad that's been able to make multiple MLS Cup appearance and winning multiple MLS Cup trophy. But if you're into Miami, this is the beacon of light that they've been hope, hoping after what has happened in the last couple of weeks. And that hopefully bringing such a a experienced kind of GM and probably the best GM in the league can help them be be a little bit stable in terms of the situation that they in and in other words or it's hopefully they can find a little bit of stability and and also hopefully they can maybe find a structure and maybe even sign a couple little of decent player that that in a couple of years time not only they can be a regular playoff team but maybe even compete for an a, a title just like like what what he did with the Seattle Sounders but yeah this is definitely great great news for Inter Miami but we'll see whether or not if that is going to be the case and whether or not in a couple of days time this is going to be a fish show that he is going to be jo- joining Inter Miami as the new general manager now moving on in terms of the next news involved the Columbus crew who complete the transfer of Chris Hayden to Hibernian and this you know it's kind of kind of a little bit of shame that the fact that Chris Caden is not going to be staying for the Columbus crew because I fought fought you know he even though he wasn't getting regular regular minutes with the team and that he pretty much is second in the depth chart in terms of full, in terms of the fullback position and behind Harrison Alfo in terms of that spot he was definitely a good good backup of of Alfo and that in case if Alfo next season maybe get an injury and God forbid if he does get get tested positive for COVID, Chris Caden would have been a perfect replacement and could easily just step in and pretty much has the same, almost the same quality as Harrison Alfo did. But apparently Columbus might have got a lucrative deal for, for Chris Caden from Hibernian and that they couldn't turn down that lucrative deal. Or maybe the, the fact that Chris Caden might be a little bit homesick and he does want to go back to his native country, Scotland. So therefore that's why he wants to, to move back back there and basically play in the Scottish Premiership but either way you know this is a bit of a little, bit of a tough loss for the crew and that it does put a little bit damp in terms of the depth that they had in the fullback now the Philadelphia Union re-signed Ka- Kai Wagner to a contract extension now this is kind of a little bit surprising considering the fact that this offseason the Union has been pretty much shipping their their biggest asset and also their 
their most talented young youngster to to Europe because of, because with many of these European team that's been kind of offering a huge sum of money for them to get in. That is exactly why that of course is the case. And I thought Kai Wagner was going to be one of those players that was going to join the likes of Mark McKenzie and and Brandon Aronson to make the jump to Europe, and that there was all already a lot of rumors in these past couple of months including i think there was a couple of months ago that he was actually on verge of potentially going to the premier league and actually joined with west ham after after west ham decided to 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 offer around like five or six million dollars to the union to get kai wagner well right now i guess maybe the reason why the union decided to re-sign him is that they want to be a little bit smart in terms of all the 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 asset and all the young, young talent the player that is in their squad right now and that I understand that they obviously are setting an example of what MLS team nowadays should do which is developing young players and eventually sell them off to Europe but they don't want to just kind of sell all their 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 asset in one off season where you know even though they're going to get a big sum of money by doing that Heading into next season, you still need to find like a replacement for them. And how many times we've seen it in MLS or even in the wor- world of soccer and all these other teams that decide to sell off some of their their best young talented player that they basically did it in one off season and then the very next next season they are not as good as they were in the previous season. So the union they know that that after selling a couple of their young players to Europe, they need to at least ho- keep hold of a couple of the the other youngster that is in their team so that they can can still make a push to to re- go not only go back to the playoffs next season but also so potentially push for MLS Cup but either way I think Kai Wagner if he can continue to to be be as impressive as he has been with this team for the past couple of seasons I won't be surprised he's going to be sold off to Europe and he could be be gone with this union team as soon as the next transfer window because again there's a lot of offer from Europe uh, that wants to ser- service of Kai Wagner, and it's going to be a matter of time the union is going to get that lucrative offer that they just cannot turn down and eventually sell off of one of their their asset that is Kai Wagner to to Europe. Now the LA Galaxy have re-signed Jonathan Finn Kinsman to a new contract. Now this is kind of an I- interesting one, and in some way kind of a confusing one because Jonathan Kinsman, I thought that he. He was okay la- last season when he came in for David Bingham, but he wasn't really that spe- spectacular, and that that was not really kind of an upgrade to what David Bingham was between the stick for the Galaxy. Now, that being said, he is still a very young goalkeeper, and he still needs to have more development. But at the same time, I think with him re-signing with the Galaxy, and also with the Galaxy just recently confirmed the signing of Jonathan Bond from West Brom, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not if he can, can continue be be in that starting role for the Galaxy. And that heading into this season, the Galaxy actually have a little bit of a dilemma in terms of the goalkeeper position. I mean, you know, David Bingham is no longer with this team. They have three goalkeeper that is fighting for that, that starting spot. And it'll be interesting to see who exactly is going to win that spot. Or maybe they're going to be be one of those teams that is just going to rotate in terms of their goalkeeper and hope that they... That will be a way to maybe find find success throughout the season. Although we have seen times before when when teams decide to rotate their goalkeeper and don't actually have a a legitimate starter, they don't usually do as as well well in the league compared to teams that already have committed to have a number one goalkeeper between the stick. Now moving on in terms of the next news and now getting into the crazy rumors that happened in these last couple of days. And the first crazy rumors surround Radomir Falcao, who not only he is reported to come to MLS, but he's actually gonna gonna be rumored to join the Portland Timbers as the team that he's gonna play in MLS. Now, when this announcement was made, I think that really put a lot of shockwave to everybody, which including myself, which I, I I mean I knew Falcao was potentially gonna come to MLS, but the Timbers was probably the last team I would have guessed that he was potentially rumored to join and the Timbers own owner Merit Pulse didn't even shoot down this this report saying that it's not true whatsoever and that they are are in no negotiation to Galatasaray who is the current te- team that Falcao is 
playing to potentially come to MLS and join the team. And, you know, it wouldn't make sense why Falcao would join the Timbers, mainly because, you know, they, the Timbers, one of the issue heading into this, this offseason is that they want to get younger in terms of, of that aging attacking core that they had. So signing Falcao is definitely not a great solution to that when you have a guy that is already 35 years old and still and also injury prone and that you're just basically adding adding a guy that is already past his prime and pretty much make the the aging attacking core even more more older because of that. And that the other reason why it kind of doesn't make sense is that didn't they just sign Felipe Mora on a, a permanent deal just a couple of days ago, and he was the guy that was pretty much going to be co covering Yaroslav Nisgoda while Nisgoda was was coming back from a torn ACL, and that the Timbers are kind of already too deep in terms of that number nine spot, and that I don't think they really need to, to get another, another striker to add even more depth in terms of the spot. And speaking of depth, I'm pretty sure the Timbers, they have other areas that they need to, to figure out, and that probably one of the big area that they need to to figure out besides maybe maybe try to get younger in terms of the attacking core is definitely the defensive area i mean there's been time last season they struggle in terms of that department and you know they also want to maybe add some more depth in that d d department as they were there it's when you look at that back line there are some areas where they are a, a little bit lack of depth in terms of it so yeah, I just think this is probably not going to happen. But if Falco does, does come to MLS, I'm assuming he's probably going to be joining in, in another team besides the Timbers. I won't be surprised if he joined the Galaxy because that's kind of what the Galaxy does. They like to do some big big name hunting or maybe even Inter-Miami, which I, I remember when Falco was first rumored to come to MLS. Inter-Miami was actually one of the first team that was rumored to potentially get him and that now his name is being thrown back into to the hat of the rumor mill in MLS I won't be surprised he could potentially be going to Inter Miami in the future now the Timbers Cascadia rival Seattle Sounders was also in the news on in the crazy room, rumor mill that happened in the last couple of days around MLS and this time it's actually while they're they're leading goal scorer Jordan Morris who is actually drawing interest from Swansea and that Swansea actually are interested in trying to sign Morris on a six-month loan now I know Jordan Morris have said before that he doesn't want to go to Europe and that he wants this to play his entire career in MLS and most specifically with the Seattle Sounders but I won't be surprised if he had has a bit of a change of heart and maybe think about about making the jump to Europe I mean if he does think about making the jump to Europe it's pretty much now or never since he's 26 years old and that's kind of the, the closing window of the fact that you better make the jump to Europe or else not a lot of team is going to potentially offer give you an offer to basically join their team in Europe and that you know this also kind of technically benefit both Morris and the Seattle Sounders because you know, for Morris, he's going to be joining a Swansea team that is currently in a promotional battle and look to go back to the Premier League. And if he does look impressive with this Swansea team, then he can potentially be, be joining this Swansea team on a permanent deal. And he could actually be a Premier League player heading into next season. Or if he actually does play, play well, he could potentially get other offer from other good teams, good team around Europe for for his service and also the Sounders are going to get a huge benefit with the way way that that they're going to get a big sum of money if Jordan Morris is going to be able to 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 do well and and basically join another team in Europe now if he doesn't do well with Swansea or if he feel a little bit but homesick doing his six month loan well that's no problem because he can just come back to the Seattle Sounders and he can just continue to play for the team so Overall, this is really, really kind of a low, low risk, high reward situation that Morris finds himself in, and I really hope he might consider going to to Europe and and try his his luck with Swansea and see see if it works out for him. And if it doesn't work out, as I said, he can always come come back to the Seattle Sounders because this is only a six month loan that the, that Swansea City is offering him. Now, moving on in terms of the next news and going back to the Portland Timbers. Uh, they are reported to, to be close to signing Chivas defender Jose Carlos Van Rankin on a year 
loan deal. Now, this signing seems like it makes more sense than what I talked about earlier with Falcao potentially going to the Portland Timbers. And I guess the only surprising news about this is the fact that I'm surprised the Quakes didn't even think about getting getting this guy because it seemed like the Quakes are always the one that always are trying to 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 sign Chivas re, retrend and that I thought maybe he was another guy that is going to be be going to the Quakes but other than that I think this is a this is a smart signing and that you know notice how I said said it's a it's a smart signing even though I know here it says there it's report to be report that it's close to signing um I also have heard some other legitimate source that this deal is pretty much much done and it was a, it's going to be a matter of time before the Timbers make it official and obviously this this move will also help them improve the the fullback position originally I was thinking maybe this was the replacement of Jorge Villafania but then I realized he play in the right back position which is not not the same position that Villafania plays who plays in in the left back back role but I guess if they decide to maybe convert him to a left back and and pretty much play him there. That could be also an option too. But other than that, you know, it's good. It's a good signing for them to kind of improve depth in the full full back position. And also, if he doesn't work out, since this is a this is a loan deal, he can all, all always go back to to Liga MX. Now, moving on in terms of the next news, involve FC Cincinnati, who is rumor with World Cup winner Lucas Podolski. Now. When I first heard this news, I was kind of surprised that Lucas Podolski was still still playing because I thought he retired a couple of years ago knowing the fact that he it seemed like he's been around the game for a very long time. But no, he was still playing in Turkey and now there is a case that he could potentially be coming to MLS and be one of the many of these old European, European superstar player that's coming to MLS to kind of retire and also pretty much adding to the feel of all those Euro snub that said MLS is a retirement league. But if you're FC Cincinnati, one way to kind of not add the feel to these Euro snub to say say that this MLS is a retirement league is probably not signing him. And besides that, I think, think it would have been it would have been a smart decision to not sign him e- e- either way because I know FC Cincinnati are desperate in terms of finding a number number nine after the whole Jurgen Lakadia experiment failed miserably for them but I don't think Podolski is going to be a guy that is going to be a solution to tr- to find a a decent number nine and didn't they they were were in for running for one, one of the one of the player from from Fluminense which I think it was Lincoln that was the the name of the player one day they were reported to try to get him and now all of a sudden we haven't heard anything about it which makes me wonder maybe they're not going to get him after all yeah i feel like if they were going to potentially either getting Podolski or the the guy that they've been long linked linked to to join the team that is linking down in brazil i would have chose chose the first choice other than the second choice because i think Podolski is just way too old and he's not going to make a, a lot of in, impact to the cincinnati team and not going to really be a a, a solution in terms of them them trying to find a crucial number nine. Now, speaking of crucial show number nine, uh, Manchester United striker Odian Igalo is is looking to try to join MLS, and he basically said that he want to to basically go to MLS after his his time with with Manchester United is going to finish. And I'll tell you, it's been a really strange career for Odian Igalo, who has kind of been become a little bit of a journeyman in that. I remember when he was with Watford a couple of years ago, he was definitely a decent decent number nine and really formed a good number nine partnership with Troy Deeney. And then he decided to go to to China to play in the Chinese Super League, which I guess maybe that's a lot of that that has to do with with that big old old green that he was trying to look to get. And then after a couple of years playing the Chinese Super League, he decided to join Man. United and I remember at times when when he joined Man United people were super confused of what in the world it is Man United is doing signing a guy that is is clearly clearly not good enough for such a big team like that and unsurprisingly he hasn't really been a regular starter for Man United whatsoever but still he is still a decent striker and that I think if he does come to MLS he can definitely bang in those goals and speaking of which you know if 
going back to what I said about FC Cincinnati, like if you, I think this is kind of a player that maybe FC Cincinnati is thinking if they're going to get another name from, from the Premier League or another another you, a well known player from Europe to potentially come to MLS because Igalo is only thirty one years old and I know he can, he can still bang in goals and he can still show that good form that he had a couple of years ago with with Watford and that and that this this move would definitely make more sense compared to them potentially like getting Lucas Pradol he who is going to be 35 years old heading into this season and probably not going to have be as good as he he used to be a couple of years ago now moving on in terms of the next news is not really kind of, kind of new information but more of kind of like a little bit update saying that the Quakes are close to signing Chivas midfielder Javier Chofes Lopez. And as I said said before, you know, if the Quakes are going to sign sign this guy, well, it's not really if, but when the Quakes does sign this guy, this is really a high risk, high high reward situation because well, I from what I heard that he can definitely be a decent player and he could be the number ten that the Quakes are desperately ne needed on their team. It can also easily blow up in in our face, knowing the fact that he has that poor disciplinary record and that he has a hi history of of critics saying that he can be be kind of a la lazy kind of player. And in some way, I could say this could be like a Vaco 2.0 situation, and I'm really hoping that is not going to be the case. Now, Minnesota United is interest in Club America winger, and I think it's Andres Ibar. Ibrogwin, that's how you pronounce his name, and that that this is clearly a move to trying to replace Kevin Molino in that spot. And if that is the case, I think that's a good replacement for Kevin Molino because in some way this player kind of reminds me a little bit of Darvin Quintero when you know the Loons bought Darvin Quintero from Club America and that they were hoping he was going to be be a dynamic, manic, uh, that di dynamic kind of player. For the team and that he turns out to be very very good for the first couple of season before you know we're not going to discuss what happened in his third season before moving on moving on from the loons and I think this could be the case again where I heard some good review about this guy and that I've also heard that he is a very fast player and can definitely bring some pace in the into the team and pace is definitely one thing I think the loons are re really lacking as not a lot of the our players in our our starting eleven are really fast player and you know if we want to be a team that maybe try to stretch stretch the stretch defense and especially that's kind of what a winger does do do we need to have guys that it is very fast and have p pace and I think that is something that can really be a good so solution to to the our issue with lack of pace and also some people even said that he is even a a better option than what Kevin Molino was from last season. And then finally, the New York Red Bulls is report to sign former Inter Miami defender Andres Reyes. And if this rumor does happen and if this signing does come true, that has to be a kick in the nut for if you're Inter Miami. Like I remember when he was playing with this team, he was definitely one of their, their better defender and that I thought he, they were even going to think about signing him permanently, but Apparently they did not had had the enough funds to basically sign him permanently and basically ship him back to Colombia. And then just a couple of weeks later, it seemed like now that he's probably not even going to be staying in Colombia and playing for for Nasty now, but instead now being si signed with the New York Red Bulls. Like it's one thing to basically be unable to sign a player permanently and head back to to their parent club from a different. In, in league, but it's probably another and probably even more frustrating the fact that you basically cannot afford to sign this player permanently. So now another MLS team basically is going to swap in and try trying to sign him permanently, and that's just is the case in this situation. And therefore, that's why this has to hurt for Inter Miami, knowing the fact that how in the world did another team was able to pay 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 uh his the team that he's currently on on loan with a per permanent transfer and how we can we aren't it, the one that is able to do so but for the Red Bulls I think this is definitely a good su signing and that you know I think Reyes when he does go to the Red Bulls I'm 
pretty sure he's not going to get regular minutes like he did with Inter Miami. But he does have some, some good leadership and some good mentor in Tim Parker and Aaron Long that will definitely t they help him in terms of development being his game and can and is also another good good ki kind of backup option for the Red Bulls in terms of their, their back line and also adding some more depth in terms of the back line too. But yeah, there you have it. That is pretty much it for this weekend's edition of News of the Week. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of all these news and as always if I didn't mention a news news topic that happened from these last couple of days and it wasn't on the board let me know in the comments below but yeah hope you guys enjoy this video and i will see you guys next time